Welcome back, I'm Bill. Almost from the beginning of this channel, I've been fielding questions about burning lamps and lanterns indoors and about uh, fumes and stinky lanterns and things of that nature. So I'd like to address that in this video. Now, the first thing I wanna say, if your lamp or lantern really stinks, and they shouldn't, you may just need to clean it. I picked this up this past weekend. It's an old 200. And since it was full of fuel as it was, and the pump worked, I decided to put a cap with a good gasket on it and put a mantle on and fire it up just to see what I was working with before I tear it down and clean it up. I did it outside, didn't notice anything in particular, shut it off, let it burn out, brought it in the house, and my wife and daughter immediately complained about the stench. And they were justified. It really did stink. Um, and, you know, I look at it, and I know it's the, the globe is so dirty, you, can, you can't really see, but uh, the generator is black and actually crusty. Uh, there's oily residue all over under the, the collar. Uh, the whole thing is dusty and just dirty. So imagine when you fire up your gas furnace for the first time in the fall and it smells like it's burning something off. Imagine that, but many, many times worse because of all the, the, the goop uh, and the grime and the old fuel residue and everything that's being burned off here. If your lantern or lamp stinks, that may well be why. You just need to clean it. But that aside, they should burn efficiently and they shouldn't produce any particular smell. Um, so I've said before, for combustion you need two things. You need fuel, you need oxygen. You get those in the right combination and things burn very efficiently. Uh, and you can tell that by, how, by, by the color of the flame. Um, for example, candles. Let's look at some old tech here. The candle burns with a yellow flame. It's got oxygen, it's got fuel in the wax, uh, but it's not very efficient. And it's also not very bright because of that. In contrast, you look at your Coleman appliance, your lamp or lantern or stove, because they all work on the same technology. In fact, a stove may be easier to visualize. When you light it and the generator's cold, it's burning very inefficiently. You get an orange flame, you may get soot, it may flare up. It'll look a lot like this candle flame, just on a larger scale. Once it heats up and the generator is working like it should, and it's vaporizing the fuel like it should, you've got the right oxygen and, and fuel mixture, you get that nice blue flame. That's what you're looking for. It's burning efficiently there, just like your natural gas stove in the kitchen. Um, nice blue flame. If your natural gas stove suddenly has a yellow or orange flame, you need to have it serviced because it's not burning efficiently anymore. Now, as far as smell goes, I can smell a little bit. Um, the fact that we can put oil or, or various scents, whatever method they use to do that, in a candle and it dis dissipates into the room highlights the fact that combustion is incomplete here. Um, if you were to put that into a Coleman lamp, don't do that, <laughs> it'll make a mess. But if you were to do that, theoretically it would burn off because the combustion is, is more complete. But on a candle it's not, so that scent will be dispersed into the air. I blow it out. Apart from that initial smoke, I don't really smell much of anything. The wax is already starting to solidify. It's not evaporating into the air because of the heat, so there's not much of a smell there. Now, we get a little bit higher tech. This is a little kerosene lamp. It's almost a toy uh, a friend gave my daughter. And it illustrates the point about the stinky lamp or lantern well. It runs on kerosene. When, when my daughter got it, it had some very old yellow kerosene in it, some stale kerosene. Uh, I didn't even think about it. My daughter put it on the buffet in the dining room. It was in the summer. I came home one day and the whole downstairs reeked of old stale kerosene. And my first thought was, oh no, I've got a lantern leaking somewhere. And so I started walking around the house sniffing and eventually my nose led me to this little guy and I realized what was happening. It was sitting in the sunny window. It was relatively warm in the house, and that was causing the kerosene to evaporate more than it ordinarily would at room temperature. Um, 
and that evaporation it draws up off the wick through the burner and it disperses into the air and you get that nasty kerosene stink. Uh, and the, the more stale the kerosene, the worse it is. Uh, an Aladdin lamp, which is a wick and a burner, works on the same principle but is far more efficient. Um, you still have the same problem. I have to drain my, my uh, Aladdin lamps in the summer if I just leave them sitting around in the house when it gets warm, uh, the, the smell of kerosene gets overwhelming. Now with this, this is a bit more efficient. The, it draws air in from underneath the burner on the outside and this tall uh, chimney creates a draft which draws the air in. So more oxygen means you can burn more fuel That was good. More oxygen means you can burn more fuel. You see, when we've got too much fuel and not enough, not enough oxygen from the draft of the chimney, uh, it soots. It's very sooty. So we'll put the chimney on. And we adjust it until we get just the right combination of oxygen and fuel, just to the point where it's not sooty. It creates more of a flame than the candle does, obviously. It creates, potentially, a brighter flame than the candle does. You notice it's still yellow, still orange. That means it's still not burning all that efficiently. It's better than the candle, but of course, what happens? We blow it out. It smokes for a bit, but I smelled very little kerosene while it was running. As soon as I blow it out, the smell of unburned kerosene becomes very strong. Well, what's happening? Normally, you get some evaporation at room temperature off of that wick. But now, it's been drawing fuel up the wick. You've got a hot burner. The heat's still there. Not enough to cause the fuel to combust. So there's no combustion at all. But evaporation is happening and the kerosene is getting into the air. And that's where you get the stench from. That brings us to what Coleman did. All right, let's take a look first at this instant light. I'm using some lamps instead of lanterns just because it's easier for you to see what's going on here. Uh, lamps and lanterns, they, they have the same design, they work exactly the same way. Uh, this is basically the same as a 220 or a 228. Um, many of the parts are interchangeable. So the first thing we see is unlike the kerosene lamp or an Aladdin lamp, which has a wick that's constantly wicking fuel up out of the fount and exposing it to the air where it can evaporate and make a smell, the fuel on the lamp or the lantern is contained in the fount and it's trapped there. So you aren't going to get any vapors coming out of the fuel cap. The valve shuts off the, the, the fuel feed. Um, so one, you're not going to lose any fuel to evaporation. Two, it's not going to smell. It shouldn't smell. Now, this is an instant light. It's a gasoline lantern. Um, the instant light feature leverages gasoline's low, uh, low uh, flash point. So um, you can get a little bit of fuel there and uh, just enough to light it. It'll burn inefficiently for maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds and then settle down once the generator's hot and it's burning efficiently and you've got that nice blue flame. So let's see that in, in, in action here. I've already pumped this up. Now I can smell of it right now because it's burning inefficiently. You can see there's an orange flame. It hasn't settled down to the, the nice glow yet, but it's getting there. And we'll open it all the way. See how that's nice and bright. Once it's running, you shouldn't smell anything, at least nothing significant. But, what happens when we shut it off? When we shut it off, we cut off the fuel supply. We've still got our oxygen. But what's happening now is, is as things cool down, the vapor that's left in the generator is slowly burning off.
it's still pretty hot. So I'm not going to smell anything. But now suddenly, I've got an orange flame inside those mantles. It's not bad. But suddenly, I'm able to smell the unburned fuel. And depending on your lamp or lantern, which model it is, I've noticed some like my AGMs um, at this point tend to smell worse. And when you take it in the house, if you've been burning it outside um, for a good five or 10 minutes while it's still hot, I think because the generators are larger and may hold on to more fuel. Um, and on, with gasoline, it even operates fairly quickly um, just because of the warmth you get more of a, 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 a gasoline odor once it's, once it's off. I can smell a little bit, but because this is a gas model, because the generator's thin, it burns off quickly and there's not much of a smell. But again, your mileage may vary. It depends on the lantern or lamp model. Some may be worse than others. But that should be about the only time you get a, 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 a smell is on an instant light gasoline lantern or lamp. When you light it, and when you shut it off because there's that orange flame. As long as it's burning brightly and you've got a blue flame, you're in good shape. Now, let's switch over to kerosene. Because kerosene is a bit different. Kerosene has a much higher flash point. So if we were to try to, to run it like we would an instant light, we'd end up with a fireball because the, the kerosene, the generator wouldn't heat up fast enough and in the time it would take to heat it up, kerosene would run everywhere and we'd have a mess and then it would catch on fire. We don't want that to happen. So with kerosene, most kerosene models have a little preheat cup and we fill this with alcohol. I'm using methyl hydrate. If you're in the US, they'll refer to that as denatured alcohol. Valve is off, fount is, is pumped up, and just realized I need to I need to plug the hole in the top with the, the hanger because if we don't do that, we end up with flame jetting out the top. First thing we do is we light that alcohol. And it'll take a little bit. Basically, the way these work, the kerosene, uh, is um, when the alcohol is just about burned down, the generator will be hot enough and we can open the valve and the kerosene uh, will vaporize as soon as it hits the, uh, the, the generator and will uh, have a, a lantern burning properly right from the get-go. Now, the alcohol burning has no scent. So we'll get no, no odor, no offensive odor here. I know you can't see it. Uh, methyl hydrate or denatured alcohol burns very cleanly. So um, if the lights were out, you might be able to see a faint blue flame. Uh, you can see now that flame's starting to make the, the, lamp, the, the, the mantles uh, glow a little bit. Now watch, the generator's hot. It just lights. Yeah. So you can see it's burning nice and bright now. Don't notice any particular odor. Um, and it was like that from the get-go because it was preheated. Uh, this might be a good point I can illustrate. Uh, remember, you need fuel and you need oxygen in the right proportion for proper burning. Uh, if you're getting an orange flame when you should be getting a nice bright flame like this, well, you could have a fuel system problem. I've got a video on that. Um, but more than likely, your issue is uh, you're not getting enough oxygen for the fuel to burn properly. Uh, if you notice, I can cover up the air tube and suddenly it'll... It burns orange. And of course, it smells when that happens. Uh, so, I, depending on where you live, I've never had the problem here on Vancouver Island, uh, but other parts of the world where you live, there are critters that like to get up inside those air tubes into the manifold uh, and build nests, mud daubers and spiders and things like that. Uh, and um, that can obstruct the airflow and that may be why your lamp or lantern isn't burning properly. But, 
Because this is kerosene and it has a higher flash point, you may notice that you get more of a scent when you turn it off. So I will turn this off. And it's burning off. Now see, I'm getting that orange, orange flame again. Now I can smell the kerosene. because it's not burning so efficiently. And now it's out, and the odor's actually getting a little bit stronger. The kerosene supply is shut off, but there's enough between the valve shut off and, and the top of the generator um, that uh, it gives a little bit of an odor as it evaporates, for the same reason that uh, the kerosene lamp, uh, the wick lamp, did but it will evaporate fairly quickly. So this is the only time on a kerosene lamp when you shut it off, that's the only time you should really get a stink from the fuel because that's when you're, you've, you've no longer got efficient burning. From the time you, you light it with a preheat while it's burning up until you shut it off, it should be burning nice and efficiently and you shouldn't smell anything. So that's, uh, that's the stinky lantern part. Next, we'll talk about burning indoors. All right, on to the second part of the video. Can you burn these indoors? Well, here's Coleman's official answer I pulled from their website today. Under Lantern Facts, can I use my Coleman stove or lantern indoors? And Coleman says, your Coleman stove and lantern using liquid fuel or propane are designed for outdoor use only. All fuel appliances, stoves, and lanterns should be used outdoors in well-ventilated areas clear of combustible materials due to the danger of fire and the emission of carbon monoxide from burning fuel and the effects of carbon monoxide exposure. So that's the official word from Coleman. Now, if you're uncomfortable burning these things indoors, that's fine. Don't burn them indoors. But it is ironic that they say that because Mr. Coleman started his company making gas pressure lamps, which aren't very different from the, the modern lanterns. They all work on the same technology. They burn the same way. The, the primary difference is when they developed an internal pump um, or uh, different valve designs and that sort of thing. Um, but he came up with his lamp specifically for indoor use. The lanterns, which I guess you could say are sort of multi-purpose use to go outdoors because they're shielded from the wind, the lanterns came later. The lamps came first. So Coleman lamps were designed to use indoors. Um, we all think of the Coleman camping stove, but Coleman also made hot plates. They made indoor stoves. I've got a large cabin stove. These were designed for use in trailers and in homes, in cabins and they work exactly the same way that the, the you know, suitcase stoves you take camping with you work. So uh, I'm not sure when Coleman changed their policy on that. I know I just went digging through some of my parts and found this uh, 286 carcass. Uh, and it says on here, where did I see that? This is all the French. And I've got to take my glasses off to actually see this. Oh, it's on the collar. The French is on the, the label. Uh, for outdoor use only, do not use inside house, camp, or tent, or other unventilated or enclosed areas. Um, perhaps the unventilated is the key there. But I, and, and this uh, 286 is from 1992. Uh, so I suspect uh, Coleman dealt with lawsuits. Um, we live in a litigious society where people don't follow common sense. Uh, our society is increasingly risk averse and Coleman decided it just wasn't worth the risk of having people use their products indoors, even though that's what they were originally designed for long before the, the camping outdoor type use came along. So it's interesting that, that 286 is from uh, 1992, made in Wichita. I pulled out a few of these lanterns that were made. This is a 331 from the 70s, and this 222A and the 625 a were the very last generation of lanterns made in the Toronto factory uh, in 1987 and in 1989. So this 331 was made in 1978. Let's look at the deco. 
All of the easy lights with these wraparound decals have similar uh, cautionary notes. It says this appliance consumes oxygen. When used in any inside area, provide a fresh air opening of at least five square inches. Increase fresh air openings as marked for each additional appliance. So, five square inches. This is a 300, 350 candle power lantern, five square inches. That's, that's about like that. That's, that's not big, that's a cracked window. This 222A, also made in Toronto in 1987, so this is one of the last generation. Um, the, it's been changed as danger to health without adequate ventilation. Provide ventilation of at least three square inches or 20 square centimeters increases marked on each appliance. So uh, this is a, I think, 150, 175 candle power lamp. So it doesn't need as much oxygen. And the 625, this is the big 550 candle power. This is from 1989, again, very last of the, the Toronto made lanterns. This appliance consumes air, oxygen. When used in any enclosed area, provide two fresh air openings for cross ventilation preferably one high and one low, totaling at least 38.7 square centimeters, six square inches, increased fresh air openings as marked for each additional appliance. It's interesting, none of these say anything about carbon monoxide. Um, I routinely burn lamps indoors. I routinely burn, well, I should say occasionally a lantern indoors. Um, I've never had my carbon monoxide detector go off. Um, I shut up a 237 and a 236 together um, in the same room with the carbon monoxide detector, and it got really hot in that room, um, but the carbon monoxide detector never went off. Um, so eventually, I'm sure it can be a problem, um, but uh, I always find it funny that people will burn candles um, or burn kerosene lamps in their house uh, without batting an eye, but they won't, they're afraid to burn a lamp or a lantern. Um, some of that perhaps may be that these are under pressure. Obviously, a candle or a kerosene lamp, uh, wick lamp, uh, isn't under pressure. Um, that's why before you take anything in the house or burn it indoors, uh, you should check it over. You should make sure that it doesn't have any leaks. You should burn it outside or in the garage somewhere uh, where it's safe, just in case something goes wrong. Have a fire extinguisher handy and make sure that the thing's going to work properly. Um, I usually burn anything outside after I've inspected it and made sure it works. Uh, I usually give, give any appliance at least half an hour burning outdoors before I would bring it in the house and trust it there. And of course, never leave it alone uh, and never leave it burning when you're sleeping because they do consume the oxygen. Um, and uh, even if you've got something cracked, a window cracked, if you're sleeping or if you leave the room, something could go wrong, uh, it could flare up. You need to be there if that happens. So never leave them unattended. Um, but as these old ones say, crack a window. You need a little bit of ventilation. Um, and that's always been the case. Um, but as long as you've got ventilation, uh, and, and it, again, it doesn't require a great deal, um, they should be just fine. You need oxygen, um, the, the fresh air will um, hopefully clear out any small amounts of carbon monoxide that develop. You know, the same thing happens with your natural gas stove. Uh, burn it too long, uh, it's not recommended to use a natural gas stove for heat, say if the power's out, because burning it for long periods of time does cause carbon monoxide to build up. But during the short time you're using it, um, even up to a few hours if you're cooking, uh, it's not a problem. Even then, even then still you want some ventilation and the same goes with these. So they are safe, no pressure. If, you, if you're just not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Um, but uh, this is what they were designed for, for burning indoors. Uh, and um, Amish people still use them indoors routinely. People who are off grid, um, people who live in countries uh, where power is flaky, um, when the power goes out, many of us collectors, we love power outages because it's a chance to light something up. So there you have it. Um, again, the official word from Coleman is no, don't do it. But Coleman designed these things to burn indoors. So as long as you're comfortable doing that, um, they're perfectly safe doing that as long as you follow the precautions. So I hope you found this enjoyable. Hope the comments don't blow up. Please don't do that. Um, if you don't want to burn it indoors, just don't burn it indoors. Um, we'll see you next time.